now recent footage has come out of which I'm showing you that people are saying that this represents the eight to 10 foot creature and it was finally caught on camera while others are saying that it was just three people walking together on the sidewalk. We have a lot of footage and a lot of information to get into. And one of the most interesting turn of events, the witness that testified of how he saw the Nephilim in the Miami mall and how everyone was just running now says he was trolling and that he wasn't being for real, but then ended the video by saying that you guys do need to look out for these types of creatures though, with a little bit of a, a winky wink. And a lot of people are saying that he's been silenced by the men in black. However, others are saying that we were all trolled and, and I firstly also just want to say, another guy who was the son of a police officer put out a video where he FaceTimed his dad, who apparently is running for sheriff, and uh, then his, his dad didn't really have any words to say when he was questioned about the event that took place, of which I'll be showing you guys that video here in a couple minutes. And you're going to want to stick around here on this video because I'm going to tell you some details about the Nephilim that might explain some things to you. And again, we're just looking into this. I was shocked to hear the criticism that I got on the first video. People were saying that I, I talked too much about the, the Nephilim and other people were saying that I didn't talk enough about them. So I was, I was pretty surprised to hear both ends of the spectrum. And I, I just want to clarify for all those who are about to comment something right now that we are just looking into the topic. I am not guaranteeing that there were eight to 10 foot creatures spotted at the mall. You can understand why the public though doesn't just automatically believe the police officers. Like the news media and everyone has been making fun of people like myself who are simply looking into the topic. And they say that we are just funneling conspiracy theories and just adding fuel to the fire. But just because we don't automatically believe everything we're told by the mainstream media, and you can understand why after we've been lied to time and time again, yeah, we're not automatically going to take your word for it. So I'm going to show you the video from the son of a police officer. How have I not heard about this? My dad's a police officer in Miami. And I mean, like he's even running for sheriff and I, I just talked to him. He didn't say anything about that. Hey. Hey, did you, uh, have you been seeing the alien stuff? Did you see that in, at, at Bayside? Oh, I'm not allowed to talk about it. I'm not allowed to talk about you're, it. You're joking. You're joking. Did they tell you not to talk about it? How many times you were just like the park? Okay, so they're saying it's like a, um, like a fight broke out. Why did they send so many police cars? Are you serious? You can't say it. You can't say The possibility does exist that the police officer is being honest when he says he can't talk about it. I wonder why. Again, I'm not going to bet that Nephilim were actually spotted in the Miami mall. I personally am on the fence on this one. We can't just trust in these witness accounts. We can't just trust in every in each TikTok video or the son of a police officer. I'm shocked I'm even able to make this video. You guys know I told you last time about how we've gotten some indirect sources from the FBI that the things that I'm saying concerning these spiritual matters are pretty accurate and they actually have evidence of bodies underneath their and their centers. But anyways, stick around because I'm gonna tell you some details of the Nephilim that happened after Noah's flood that will explain a lot to you. The Bible is not just some historical book written by a bunch of old dead men. It's actually the first and greatest book of all time that was hyperlinked. The chart you're seeing now represents every single time a scripture is cross-referenced throughout the entire Bible. I, I gotta just tap my toe in, but we, we can't go full in, but you know, we're just gonna get a little bit deeper today. This is six, when it talked about these fallen angels that intermingled with men, we know as a fact that the DNA was altered. And it also says how after the flood, the Nephilim still existed. So how did they exist? Well, what happens in the, in the gene line of the wives that were aboard that Noah's Ark, Who's to say that their genes weren't slightly intermingled? And I mean, sure, maybe they weren't full giants at the time. And so you're thinking, well, then how could giants exist afterward? But if there's at least one fallen DNA strad within their genes of whom they were on the Noah's Ark, then you could understand how after that other genealogies are going to represent that. And that's actually why Jesus had to have the perfect bloodline. That's why the Bible spends pages just telling you the names of each generational line 
line that Jesus had is because Jesus redeemed us from the broken curse. You got to understand people, people are like, why did God send the flood? You don't understand. Humans almost didn't even exist when he sent the flood. It, it was a fallen breed of cannibalistic animals. God sending the flood didn't <laughs> eliminate humanity. He was actually rescuing humanity. So with these Nephilim, not only could their spirits continue operating in the regions that they had authority of, but you can see how their genes still intermingled with the human population. It's also interesting. Now we have artificial insemination. We have some really shady things going on in the world right now. It reminds me of a story of a woman who was told that she could just live out her career and do everything that she wanted to do. So she froze her eggs. I think she had like six eggs. And sure enough, after she came back, she lived out her career. You know, she did what the feminist movement told her to do and her eggs unfroze and none of them ended up surviving. They all died. She was pulling out her hair saying, how could I have been so lied to, so manipulated, and now I can't even have a generation after me. And that's what people realize, man, is you, you drink the tea that the world gives you and sure you live for yourself and you fill yourself up. And then at the end of your days, you look back and you're like, man, what can I continue carrying on in this generation? And when you've completely forsaken the gift, that God has given, you you shouldn't be wondering why you're not walking in joy and peace and love and life and victory. <laughs> Here's what's amazing about Father God. I know by now you're probably questioning your own DNA. You're like, Gabe, do I have some Nephilim spirits up within me? Listen, you don't need to fear if you're under the right type of blood. The blood represents the very life of someone's person, the very value that someone carries. And the blood of the Son of God, the only Son of the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, was literally the price that was paid for your life because he loves you so much, because he has chosen you. And in a world of confusion where no one knows who to trust or where to go, there is one place you can always trust and his name is the Son of God, the one who forever has chosen you. And so I just invite you in. I know if you're like the viewers who were on the last video, uh, you might be questioning this, you might be debating with me, you might be just wondering something. What if I just told you, what if Jesus could be real? And what if he could actually be caring for you. You say, Gabe, how could a God even exist after all the struggle I've been through, after all the evil and all the babies being killed and all the wars going on and all the diseases? How could God ever exist? And if he does exist, I wouldn't even want to serve him because it's just so evil. Well, what if I told you that God is actually so good? He's given us free will and it's actually our choice how we choose to handle this earth. And as good as God is, because he's good, he actually represents true love. And if you know true love, it's not slavery. It's not robots. It's not manipulation. When I married my wife, I didn't drag her down the aisle. I couldn't do that. That wouldn't represent a real relationship. And as much as God loves you, he only wants you to experience him out of your own choice. He only wants you to live your life on this earth and all billions of us on this earth. He only is waiting for us to do what we are supposed to do. So instead of blaming God for all the junk that's going on on the earth, we should instead be asking ourselves, why have we allowed such junk to happen? I'm shocked I'm not even banned yet on YouTube, although they have completely taken me off the monetization. I haven't gotten a single penny from YouTube in the past six months now. And the only reason I'm able to continue running this channel is because of viewers like yourself. And if you would like to support the messages that I'm getting out there, I preach everywhere I go for completely free. I pay for my own flight. I pay for my own hotel, the car rentals, which can be pretty expensive nowadays. I'm able to do that because of your guys' support. So if you guys want to continue supporting me and donate to the channel, you can do so down the link in the description below. YouTube is suggesting this next video to you because it's actually pretty interesting. Some Nephilim that appeared in the Solomon Islands have been talked about for a long time. And I don't know, we just looked into the topic. It's something pretty interesting that you got to look into. I don't know why you haven't clicked right here. Uh, so be sure to go check this out and hit the subscribe button while you're at it.